exciting. I think there's a high chance with this veto we see Mouse Sports actually win. And without further ado, we are into Inferno. The match that Mouse Sports took off of Astralis, 16 to 3. Our 13 and 5 in recent record on have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 7 map win streak on and are now trying to work their way into Banana, but look who's hot on their heels. Yeah, Vitality looking hot on all fronts. Although, there is still a chance for Mouse Sports to just kick their way into the bomb site. We've got B-Mass waiting back a little. The element of surprise. Masuda dies as he jumps in. RPK and Ziwu versus Frozen. That's what we're left with here for the first round of the matchup. And well, they're coming eventually. He's looking a little skitterish, Frozen. That flashbang goes over to the CT cross. Vitality not knowing exactly where Frozen's gotten off to. So he's just going to play this one nice and cool. RPK does have that kit. Oh, Frozen, yes. he's got the first one, knows exactly where RPK is. He's going to play the Jiggle game by that time. However, no time. even with the kit, it's not going to make a difference. We've got Mouse Sports on the board for the first round of the game. Now you guys might be wondering what happened. I have no answers. <laughs> <laughs> Producer said... Game's going live. I said, all right. We sat down. Frozen, maybe the best quad player on both sides. One thing that's been very special about Mouse Sports on their CT side of this map is Frozen and Chris J working together. Chris J sometimes dies, doesn't get too much impact, but Frozen has been a very consistent fallback anchor, stays at quad, knows how to delay for a very long time. And when Chris J's on, of course, that's when it's... The effect is even more dramatic. How much control they can take over when it comes to Banana. And that's something we'll be looking for in, in the next half. In this first half, we're going to be looking for Kerrigan. Taking the highest percentage of opening duels. Running to the top of Banana. Trying to find fights. Well, Masuda's going to find two off the back of the force by Chris J's oh grenade is a little something. But Masuda, a little pent-up aggression for Mouse Sports in the second round, and he's going to get that deep banana control. Leaves Bomb stranded in middle. Frozen and Rops. The two most consistent pieces of Mouse Sports. Easily. They're the simple and electronic of Mouse Sports. It's a weird comparison, but I'll run with it. I appreciate you. I mean, listen, we saw Rops Because we saw Rops simple is that Ukrainian, offense. that's why it's weird. Uh, this is true. We've got two smokes, flash, frag. And a nice cooled off effort here from Mouse Sports. Who's going to be used first? They are so screwed, man. They don't have a lot of good options here. Um, an insane round so far from Misuda. They're going to try to run it down, right? But 28 seconds, they've got to let their footsteps be heard. However, no rotations have come just yet. So running through the smoke is the very best option. Apex, he's on the side of the smoke waiting for them to come through. And he, oh, cannot land that spray. Not a single kill for Apex. And the bomb is going to get planted on the grill. The CTs will start to move in. And this dire situation has now found its feet. Yep. Looking recoverable for Mouse Sports. There is still that Banana Man. Frozen. Oh, he's going to duck. He ducks down and dodges a lot of damage from RPK. He still takes one to the back of the head. And Frozen with 17 health. Three kills to his name. Oh, okay. so close. 19 health, the difference in the end of this one. Masuda, big pop off with that Deagle. Crazy. He actually hit him with like the double dink there too, right? RPK. Yep. But he'll get on it. And this is kind of a mistake here for Vitality. They do such a great job of delaying. But after they get this bottom banana control, they leave one player here. It's a two-on-four situation, but they kind of play it like there's higher numbers on the T side. They leave one person in the B side, and yeah, of course, Apex should get one kill. But in the circumstance that he doesn't, there was no fast rotation. No one came over, and the idea is, of course, if you lose that bottom B control and you hear them running, maybe a CT should make their way over towards B. So it comes pretty close, but again, they eventually close it out. And it's not with the best guns ever. Vitality scoring a second round win here with huge concessions in their weaponry. That MAC-10 still on Apex. Damage exchanged here. Still, Robson Frozen, the two players who were meant to claw back that last round and nearly did, are going to be the heavy hitters 
for most sports in round three. What are we looking at tonight, Mohan, in terms of the head-to-head? -head? Zewu versus Rops? Uh, yeah, Zewu versus Rops. I mean, this is about game plan for me. When we saw... Okay, hold on. There's going to be an interaction here. A flash in for Masuda, our star player from B last round. His itinerary brought him to A, off spawn here, and he ends up getting a kill. Weaponized perfectly. He's got to fall back over to lane. And once again, top banana control and... Presence at bottom mid, that spot. Crossfire, RPK, yeah. once the smoke fades. But in Molotov at his feet, Robs, he's gonna drop Apex off of the arch side. Still three players stacked up for Vitality, could bode well. Nevera and Masuda, two kills very quickly. I like this aggression from Vitality. It's what we saw them use to kick down the front door of top mid early, and now it's Beamass with a hell. double. Beamass, of course, having won his first, or gotten his first professional ace. Ooh, Very RPK. Unlucky. That's it. Ooh, meant to get both, but it's Beamass. As I was just saying, he aced Astralis just a couple of days ago. His first ace on record. And he does it versus Astralis. If that's not good for the confidence, I don't know what In a is. grand final where they won against Astralis' best map, 16-3. to three. This exact map, 16-3. to three. One bullet. One bullet makes the difference. But sometimes... It's got to be a perfect shot when it comes to dealing with Zewu. He's wrapped up and he's going to walk right into the crosshair. Big multi kill from BMAS to get Mouse Sports right back in control. Hunter, did you see that trade, man? He had thought he was so done, right? RPK had the flank. BMAS had to pull a perfect 180. Does it with this wonderful looking case hardened. A nice spray down here at mid and very good on bracket on both sides. Yeah, this is insane from BMAS coming up huge. Huge reason why Mouse Sports were able to make their heroic run through the upper bracket of DreamHack Masters was because BMAS's consistency has come up a ton. His consistency alongside Robs and Frozen is that like deadly trio of young stars. And also watching Kerrigan and Chris J kind of bring up this, the, you know, the, the skill floor. Just overall, in general, Mouse Sports individually performing better in this last couple of weeks. So let's talk game plan here. Last, we saw Mouse Sports, they tailor their game plan a lot to their opponents on these T sides. They seem very flexible and comfortable doing that. Now, of course, this round, their Vitality are playing back and they have invested a bit, but not a lot. So they'll allow Mouse Sports to get into the site. It doesn't seem like the bomb's quite here yet, but they've got the backs turned. Zibu misses a few Deagle shots and his teammates will try to rotate in, but it seems like a plant will go down safely now. Kerrigan going to suppress the smoke, and sure enough, he finds Apex right on the side of it. There's another player, however, over here, and that's RPK. Capable of shutting down Kerrigan as he gets aggressive, and also now ensuring an exit route for uh, the Fomus and Double Deagle. Vitality to concede a third round over to Mouse Sports. They are right back in control. Yeah. In this next round, what I'm going to wonder is, are they going to try to fight for a banana hard, and how will Mouse Sports interact with that banana control? Because... Sometimes, I mean, it depends on the CT side. And also Vitality are learning here uh, because they're leaving Zewu and B. Uh, Nevera's playing the A site since their inaugural match. And Nevera's been the one opping on this map, which is interesting uh, because Zewu mentioned that he, uh, I think, didn't, doesn't even care if he ops or not. He's comfortable on both. Of course, the man who can do it all. But uh, I guess they don't even have anything to work with now either. They're going to have the recycled Falmus and RPK and Masuda with a couple pieces of utility and an upgraded Deagle. Well, not an upgraded Deagle, just a Deagle. There's no, uh, there's no ACOG on this Deagle. It's not upgraded in any way. No, sir. No long barrel, no silencers. What other upgrades could you have on a Deagle? Extended magazine, laser sights, uh... One of my oh. favorites to see people on Twitter with the, they've got like a revolver in their hand and an extendo mag. Hell yeah. Put them together like Frozen is these kills. They keep peeking them in middle. Damn, you're spitting. And Chris J, he's going to go haphazardly hopping into this B site. BMAS, he's going to take damage over the shoulder. Of course, Zewu, ESP, 
That's going to get you a kill, it seems. Nvera, all that's left over. Nice to have him back in the server, Mohan. Dude, he initially saw it with Dust 2, but then also not the first time on Inferno replacing Shock. I mean, it's it's gracious for him to join the server on behalf of Vitality at this point. He's scoring high every single rating he's got on every map. He wins. When they he doesn't have a high rating, they still win. He's basically been a godsend for this team. Uh, I do think that uh, in Inferno's a bit a bit sketchy right now with just the growing pains of having some site some spots being switched so i think in terms of mouse boards game plan just i would try leaning towards b seeing if they could catch ziwu alone that was a big problem with vitality the first few times they played inferno and seeing for the first couple i can't, i don't actually don't know how many maps they've got under their belt at this point we go ahead and check but the last time and Mouse Sports, you know, they did some incredible things on Inferno versus Astralis, so they're confident. They're brimming with confidence right now. They are nearly overflowing. What is the scientific thing for that holds water in, where water is attracted? Why well, you're smiling like? <laughs> why <laughs> do I look like a scientist? Like I just call like I'm biology tenth grade. I just called out your name. Yeah. Did you do your homework, Connor? Uh, are you thinking water retention? I mean, I guess you could call it water retention. Know. Surface. You surface should gaslight retention? me by saying something really confidently. That would definitely get me. Mm, yeah, but you should. Oh, you me mean water there. retention? Of course. Yes. All right. Well, anyways, I don't remember what the analogy was. Well, um, that means we can move along. Yeah, let's let's do that. No ops in the play for the sixth round. Okay. Kerrigan very quickly to the top of middle. We've seen Kerrigan start to adopt this far more aggressive initial stance, and he's been doing a good job of gathering frags and sometimes only information that's what we're gonna have here on this one immediate five versus three off the back of the short control rpk is gonna eat some damage he's not the only one nevera ziwu softened health bars for vitality three targets ahead and capable targets at that this is the fragging trio that we talk about for mouse sports so let's see what they can do off of the back foot arch smoke three players ahead of them and of course that arch Lurker in Apex. A boost from Rops up onto the half wall. Spots a man in pit. Doesn't hit the shot. B-Mass looks back and Ziwu's gonna keep doing what he does. Jump spotting the half wall. Yeah, from we're B. already in a situation where there's no good options, so they'll have to decide. This is a spot where Vitality, they're going back to the default play of spotting for information on Banana. It's a good time to go and try to shy him back, right? The one folly of the setup is Ziwu has to fall back at the sight of a flash or anybody peeking and doesn't have an op to stop them from coming down. The problem for Mouse Sports is they don't know that he's here. So 36 seconds, and it's looking a lot indecisive here for Mouse Sports. They are going to start to try to continue with an A-Wrap, but this is doomed at th at this point with the two players that are here. Oh, oh no, my it's God. no, actually. Apex. One CT is in there. That oh, opens everything. Oh. That one frag completely opens a three versus one on the B site. Ziwu, who is compromised and is also one in five at the moment, will hide back behind the new box. He's just got to stop the bomb plant, catches two players off, oh but dies. God, no and just in the nick of time, Frozen's going to put that bomb down. This was a perfect setup for Vitality, but Apex dying on the library leaves them to try and recover. And it's going to be missed shots from BMAS and Rocks. Frozen, looking for the multi kill, is taken off of Coffins. Vitality still secure the round, but definitely had to get sweaty. I didn't even realize there was enough time to get to B, like, safely with the, you know, of course, with some resistance there, some friction in Apex and in Library, but a cool Moto Smoke to draw his attention forward. Even though he had three teammates on the site, by the way, didn't really need to help. Uh, he comes out off that bait. It's like the one way Mouse Sports can get into the round. And uh, listen, Zewu is not looking incredible, incredibly sharp at the moment. <laughs> I love the visceral reactions from Mither. Always good to see an animated coach. He's now standing. That's how much it matters. Yeah, I think he's adjusted to a standing setup. I don't know if he has a standing desk, but uh, he's definitely been standing up in Ops the past. In play. He, he was sitting down. He was leaning forward, usually had a, a pen in his hand. Oh my Ooh. god, through the wall. <laughs> good Ops night. In play. Emphasis. On Chris J, B Mass finding a second pickup. That's two kills early on towards this B site, and we're not even watching Mouse Sports stampede into it. Into the off chance that Vitality have more players there, they have Vitality in a squeeze Hunter, at the moment. You know what I love about Blast Production? We're gonna get this replay of that one kill from Chris J with a smooth. We're gonna get it from two different angles. We're gonna get it in slow motion. Isn't that right, Production? Maybe the zoom. The zoom. 
maybe the third perspective. DJ's oh, sweating right now. He's he's working on it though. It's gonna be a really good replay. Watch this, guys. Might even be a chicken exploding. I hate when they do that. Well, free round here for Mouseports. Great couple of entries. Unbelievable, honestly. And you know what? Kerrigan's the guy who went on HLTV, confirmed and talked about how they weren't really missing an opera on T-Side Inferno. It's not something that they would w normally do a lot when talking about Woxic leaving the team. So for Chris to grab it, I guess he saves it from the last round. Maybe he picks it up from someone. I can't remember. Or is that his op, the weed op? Chris J's op? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, he does have that. He has the black em off. Yes, he does. Yeah, so. just like me, I have the black em off as well. Uh -oh. My very favorite skin. Got to step your game up. No. <laughs> That's the peak, okay? Got to unbox you. an op fade like Vince. Dude, I cannot wait for this replay. Oh, it's coming soon enough. Bomb Dude. beyond the halfway point. Yeah. How many players are afforded a save? What do you think the odds are Robs flies out from balcony and tries to take Vitality down? Robs doesn't fly out anywhere ever, ever. This guy is more careful than a librarian. He's using the Dewey Decimal System right now to organize all of his angles. <laughs> this is the most patient player ever. He's so, so much discipline, dude. He's Mr. Miyagi. Well, no sports just waxed on a fifth round of the scoreboard. And Vitality going to be in an easy position to recover. Production, how dare you? Because they were given the save. 0-7. Oh. Oh, wait. Oh. Oh, yeah. There's a smooth. Oh, production went ham. Oh, baby. Oh, and the oh, rewind. <laughs> Let's go. I can see Will Smith now with his with his TV remote out. It's rewind time. Every one of you on the replay line. If I see one T tours in there, I'm going to come down there. Y'all the best. BMAS double grenade on the mark. He's going to be dropped down to 11 HP, but he's going to continue to challenge. So it's an easy pickup for Ziwu. His second kill of the map. A transition from Mouse Sports, perhaps, into an A play. Frozen, or rather Rops, excuse me, in the apartments, doesn't really have anybody keeping him in. Masuda's starting to back up from that short side, but now he's getting drawn back into the action. He does commit to killing Kerrigan. RPK comes from Cubby, and Rops is still yet to make a move. He's wary. He needs them to come out lane, but he's got no support. This is one of those situations where, you know, we see Rops as, like, a baiter or something, but the truth is... He needs someone to get an entry so he can activate. Coming out of halls is just not safe to do alone. And at this moment, they've got no hooks in the round. See if Chris can crack it open. Come on, Chris. Crack that whip. Masuda right there inside of the pit to the left side of it. 30 seconds left on the clock. Props. Jumping up and over. This could be the angle. This could be their route. If they have him, if he drops off, right? No peek so from big, library. Big Pit's not worried about him. This is just protocols. Really tough for drops in this situation. But he gets one, and then he gets blasted back by RPK, who had tucked in there as well. So Vitality, third round. Coming off of an easy pickup from Ziwu off of the start, and then Masuda timing his mid-peak to the fallback of the CTs on Arch. And then we get that left-right combo, RPK, from the back of the head, sucker punches, and sure enough, they use that to close. Yeah. yeah, we know what it's all about, right? If you try to take top banana control, you're gonna have a couple of 50-50 fights. There's gonna be fire in front of you, fire behind you, nade over top of you, flash to the high left. There's gonna be everything coming your way. You still might win the fight. If you do, you have a round like the last round where you grab two, they fall like a house of cards. You take the you take the B side, it's free. Sometimes it's gonna go like this. You lose your duels, the CT nades are too good, and you have to try to win back, you know, very unlikely round like we just witnessed. Luckily, we're going to have a buy-in for both teams. You know what I found? Z was actually using an MP9 a lot on the B site. I'm not sure if this was so that he could buy more often, but it feels like he's using this even when he has enough money to buy, which I thought was quite interesting. But the issue is when it became a low number setup. Mm. He was down to that gun. Just only that. Let's see how it plays out. Ooh, Apex finds the spam perfectly through that smoke. 
Masuda's gonna be looking to challenge down middle. RPK, an additional kill. RPK is off to the races. He is 12 and three at the moment. Masuda 10 and five. And another perfect piece of utility coming out of Team Vitality's CT side. They've got tons of grenades left over, but they've got Mouse Sports slowly creeping into the front door of this A site. Navera Tux. And well, he gets signed line, Rops. He finds that perfect angle coming in from short side, but he dodges the player in pit despite knowing RPK is back here. Oh, he knows where Lit Tank is. He's hiding on the bicycle. Uh, Rops is going to take to the top rope, looks to suplex him. But the two CTs coming in, well, they may not be needed. RPK goes ahead and picks up a frag despite having a player hovering right above him. And RPK looking like the star of the show tonight. I think that's a that's a situation where Rops is a slave to his own timing because he comes, he walks around, but he doesn't want to get noticed. However, we see RPK on his X-ray. He's unaware of the thought that a graveyard flank could come in. And Rops made enough space early, but he didn't commit to trying to clear it and really took the safest route possible. And RPK found this way to outduel him. Let's really open up the round entirely. Of course, you get pick control, you're in business in terms of the post plant without it. It's a great resurgence from Vitality. Now just one round away from tying us at five apiece. And obviously with just pistols, this should be it. Tied game early. Interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. It's a very, very even game so far. The which is cool to which is cool to watch. So looks like Z has found himself an AK. He's not gonna relegate himself to an MP9 when there's an AK lying around, of course. But it does make sense. I kind of find it interesting these MP9 buys. Oh my God! I thought he was gonna go for the spam. Well, if they had caught on, this would be a situation where you could do your, like, late flash B and just charge it. Oh my goodness, the does Nevera actually miss out on that many players? That is so unlucky. But he gets the fade away. No, they're already in spawn, Nobody's though. business. And Apex, ooh, it's labored. But he at least survives those pesky tees with their pistols until Kerrigan glocks him out of the round and gets his paws on an M4. So we've got a bit of a jackknife in Kerrigan over towards that spawn, but he loses ROPs. So now what does he have to offer? Yeah, Kerrigan is uh, officially running through the hood with gold bars in his pocket out here, knowing that there he's basically got opponents everywhere and just wants to try to find a way out. He's got at least an M4 to work with. And you will play it safe. Back from Emo, take him down. They're all tied up at five, and this game does get incredibly interesting now. I think there's a multitude of options that mouse ports could try, but I don't know which one they're going to go for. Again, sometimes their T-sides can be hard to read because it feels like they go from, you know, first to second gear to sixth gear, back down, slow it down completely. And I think that's part of the charm of their T-sides, hard to read, but um, it also can be hard to, hard to predict when we're trying to watch it and figure out what they want to do next. As for Vitality, they can continue to do some stuff that they're already doing. This looks like it actually could be a very, very favorable boost. Instead, they'll fall back into a setup with some boiler control. I don't know if Chris is looking for a lurk there, but Crops, Crops, Whoa. Crops wins his duel up in halls and will spot one down close to boiler. So yeah. scary RPK back a little bit, and it looks like Mouse Sports want to pound soon. Listen, call him Crops. So he goes ahead and cuts one off of the edge of the map. Leaves still a player in the apps. But a double setup here on mid. A little crossfire. Now a third player in as Nevera's op moves closer. So vast majority of vitality over on the A site. Only a single challenger here at B. And it's going to be Zewu. Eats the flashbang, so has to turn his head. That lets them get all the closer, and Kerrigan kills him. Let's see if Mouse Sports, as they are definitely going to plant that bomb, can continue on with getting their lead back. A four versus two in the man in the uh, post plant. Easy double man advantage. Well, conditioning towards the A site, maybe Launders. We yeah, saw numbers there from Vitality. I mean, it really seems like it's coming down to these individual entries. They're not really trying to game too many rotations to find their kills. For example, when they're bur bursting out top mid or bursting to the top of banana, they're just hoping that they go on favorable trades. Here, they just let Rops go clear out halls as he would normally do. And of course, it's like sending... What are those, what are those like, Phoenix bots from the operation? Do you remember those things? Like the absolute tanks that will walk slowly and have a million HP and 
Oh, the heavy gun. You the heavy. He's yeah, like a heavy. The heavy Phoenix. It's like they were sending Robs into somewhere. It's like sending a heavy because yeah. of how careful. Two hundred armor. Yeah, two hundred armor. He moves so slowly. Health. He's never going to over peak, right? He's like impossible to kill. That's what it looks like on Masuda's yeah. screen. You get ninety percent of the way through the mission, only to die in that last wave. And then you reset. That's what Robs puts you through. So he's such a good player to send into halls. Twist is another good player that uh, is so nice at, at cleaning out the halls all by himself. Very reliable for that reason. So if Vitality want to run it, run the gamut on a double hall setup, they're going to have to run through a heavy. They can chill and talk. I think some of the opening tactics from Vitality are just fine. Like, they've got a lot of stuff here. They're still peeking down mid. They're not playing too reserved like some of the overrated Inferno teams. They're doing a lot of good right now. I think they kind of want to keep it going. Um, they might want to try to punish the halls this next round. Like if Nevera, if, if they do run some kind of Astralis setup in the halls with Nevera and another and another Rifler. But uh, they don't know if Mouseports will try to send it there. Yeah, there was three players in there last round from Vitality. One Boiler, two Balk side. Rob still manages to get away. So, no easy feat. BMAS, moving feet closer to the side of the smoke. Apex. Uh, he's getting a little haphazard with the spray here, but he is able to exit and a man advantage early for Vitality. Never shying away from the early engagement, but also never risking too much, I'd say, whether that's towards mid or banana. Bit more of an interesting round here, as there's not going to be any later grenade. Well, I don't know. Let's see what their nades look like at the moment. We've got a late smoke for, uh, for Ziwu and our rotator. Oh, it's Nevera. He's opping up over on Banana. Okay, this is pretty cool. I like this. I would. I think I would come forward to B if I was Mouseports, based on this uh, information so far, and I, w I wouldn't expect the Opera to have rotated over here. So I feel like this is a nice adjustment. But we'll see what uh, Mouseports actually decide to do because this bomb is coming into the apartments. When Vitality have been given the chance to just rest back on this A site, they've been pretty successful in holding it. So we'll see. 30 second mark, Frozen. They're here in the off, so they're going to be happy about going A now. Sure, sure. What lies in wait? Well, RPK back on Arch, Masuda right beneath them. He hears this, easy. And now it's on Apex, who's already incredibly low, but still gets the back of Kerrigan and RPK. He's the man to deliver. Who's surprised at this point? Frozen's going to be thrown into the one versus four, but doesn't even have enough time to chance this. So he needs to retreat and succeed in saving as they let Vitality take that sixth. I'm a big fan of the Vitality setup so far. Even though they're bare, like they're just tied, I feel like they've done a lot of good stuff. It's very pragmatic. You can kind of see where they're coming from with their openings. It's not always working, but I think um, the reason that mouse ports are working so well on Inferno these days is just because they're incredibly, it's incredibly hard to figure out what tempo they want to go with. Like they might just pop out somewhere and take a 50-50 take a fight. Like I always try to describe Kerrigan as like a, he's like a tourist. He's got, you know, the Instapix camera around his neck. He's just looking for a photograph. If he gets that information, his team can activate behind it. And that's the real scary part about fighting mouse ports at the moment on these CT sides. But there's a kind of a perfect 5v4 from Vitality. Smoke's going both ways. Big push versus Masuda, and that is an excellent lineup. He does tons of damage here. And RPK gonna go ahead to concede the control, fall down into the pit. Now suddenly he pops right back up and he finds another headshot. It's a man advantage for Vitality, but it's an A site compromise. Rops getting the better of Apex. The lurk through the apartments oh. works perfectly, and Nevera, he's gonna see nothing. As he gets over towards the cubby, it's bomb planted at a 2v2. Oh, spicy. Zewu and Nevera on the retake. What's gonna happen? Rops is gonna keep playing exposed to the short side. Nevera gathering information, Ziwu playing it cool. Seems actually wary of the potential for a flank into the library, but we've gotten to the point where the CTs just need to go. And Ziwu, he is hunting on the side of the smoke. Kerrigan backing up to the middle point, forces Ziwu to make some sound. Kerrigan executes the first one and then jumps up into the corner. Nevera so low on time. Kerrigan, oh, he's scared and he has a reason to be. Jumping onto the bomb with not enough time left over. Oh, it's close. Oh, oh my god, he grabs it. 
That's well done, Nevera. I was th yeah, I was thinking the same thing, man. He has to go in a no scope in the cold box. No, he plays it cool, stands back, finds the off shot. Beautiful stuff. The two v two one with the off going halls. That's a unique take. He had to hit that one shot, and I'm thinking to myself, is Kerrigan just going to jump off of this corner box, try and test the flick shot? But he thinks he can boil down the timing, and he had convinced me. Yeah, if he didn't peek at all, maybe, but how, how hard is it to read, you know? The wine of that coil in those very last moments to the exact five-second mark, really tough call. Perfect. And Kerrigan, you know, wants to bait that off shot out, so a good effort, but Vitality win another one back. Very unlikely retake situation. Kerrigan going to get caught off by Apex as he extinguishes the fire, gives himself a nice gap in the smoke to work with, but still not nearly enough. So we'll watch Mouse Sports fight off the back foot here yet again in the 14th round. Easy upgrade, tons of weapons, tons of utility, and they're already pretty clumped up, but obviously it's a daunting task to commit into a site with both Ziwoo and Apex in position. I'd love to know if Kerrigan continues to call when he dies, because he sometimes dies so early on in these rounds. Another opening here, some good flashbang support, a smoke to go down in their face. Once again, another 5v4 played pretty much to perfection here for Vitality. Ooh, but they get Ziwoo through smoke. Good call out from Chris J. Pre-fires Ziwoo's position in pit. We get an additional smoke and Vitality now split 2-2. But what's important is they, of course, have RPK push down middle. So it's on Mouse Sports to peel a player off. And, oh, he gets caught by Apex. Didn't see him. Despite that head wiggling on the edge, RPK going to be spotted. He is 18 and 4. Really? 18 and 4. Say it again. 18 and 4. Oh my God, 18 and 4. That's insane. And we are only 14 rounds deep. Thank God he came back from retirement. And frozen, well, still young. Takes on that 1v2. And Vitality now leading by two. Eight rounds to six. Hmm. Doesn't, not exactly sure if Mouse Forwards have prepared anything special for this match so far, but um, it doesn't feel like it quite as much as that grand final uh, just two days ago. This is a pretty impressive scoreline here, 18 and 4 for, for RPK. He's been playing back on A. And yeah, so, you know, typically your side anchor is not going to top frag like that. Um, mostly you're, you know, someone heavy towards mid, someone on a rotator position, unless they hit that part of the site really often. Kerrigan's going to try to gamble it once again. It's just what he does, guys. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but oh, his teammate damn. behind him. Element of surprise. Thing. And Ziwu, he's going to pass that test. Apex, he was caught with a grenade in hand, but so be it. If they execute into this with the two versus one, then they just need this crisp kill, and they can play the post plant. Ziwu, just going to tuck into the coffins. Shows his face and has it taken off. <laughs> Getting better by Frozen. So let's see it. Final attempt, final round of Mouse Sports T side. And Vitality already starting to move those remaining players into position for the retake. Let's go for the grenade count. Tons of utility. One incendiary. Nevera already with a scope up starts to slowly round the corners of construction. And if there was anybody back sight, they would have just been burned into the open. RPK is going to take that front run. Rop CZ to the side of the head. Oh, and a second kill. Now he's able to dive back. And Nevera, he's going to tap that bomb. Rop's trying to find him inside of it. But Nevera with a P250 kills him in time. Another clutch from Nevera at another round for Vitality. Welcome to the Betway Blast Full Games, where CSGO players from across the globe will compete for gold in various events. The first event is the long jump, which requires great in-game mechanical ability to synchronize your keyboard and mouse to strafe as far as you can. Currently, Pasha holds the record, however, I think his score is going to be beaten soon enough. <laughs> It wouldn't be a Betway map without chickens, but this time they will be suspended from 10 drones and players will have 10 bullets to shoot as many of them as they can. Kenny S has the best odds to take gold in this event. Event number three is surfing, and no, we're not going to the beach. The only waves we'll be seeing is those waving goodbye to the losers. Whoever is the fastest surfer will win gold. It's time to separate the Michael Jordans from the simples with the basketball event. We'll be testing the player's knowledge of grenade trajectories, 
And of course, Astralis have been winning this event for years, and that's why they're favourites. And there we have it, the Betway Blast Full Games 2020. Let us know in the comments below who you think will be taking gold. Most sports only winning one of the final eight rounds in that first half means Vitality bounced back on the defensive side of Inferno. The map choice of Mouse Sports, the map in which they smashed Astralis. They smashed him on the T side. T side? And they didn't have that great of a T side just now. So I was looking for things that change in their T side. We didn't see too much. We saw a little bit of the more regular Mouse maybe trying to feel out Vitality or thinking their uh, regular game plan would work a little bit better. So now coming into CT side, let's talk about this this uh, uh, Chris J frozen combo. However, it's going to be a push down mid. Oh, Jesus. I mean, well, it's not really a push if they don't let you. It was fun while oh last my week. god. All right, live on three. Give that another shot. Best of three pistols, right? This is the replay we needed for sure. Oh my god. It's like stormtroopers that actually hit shots. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. It's like when they first invented the Gatling gun. And people realized you shouldn't stand in a line. Is it pronounced Gatling? Or Gatling? just Gatling? Well, let's oh, okay. move along. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I could only think of Dragon Ball Z. Gatling gun. Okay. Two, two, uh, two CTs in mid, sitting back. Whoa, good day. Oh my god, what just happened? Wait, wasn't Rops at mid? Well, they took ton tons of damage from, I think, Banana, and now, uh, it looks like Zee was trying to get oh, out, but oh my goodness, b -mass. We've seen some nasty Deagle plays Dude, this man is tool-assisted. You see how mechanical that was? Yeah, they got the pistol out of the way because to them it doesn't matter. Playing on hard mode here, but RPK in the corner with the trigger discipline is pinched between the two remaining CTs, but Nevera's gonna get RPK out of trouble. Chris J is gonna burn him into the open, let the fire do its work, but he has a smoke. He counters your play, Chris. And now suddenly he's gonna have to try and retake from short side. He does have the Mac 10. And the bomb is in the corner. Gonna throw a smoke somewhat near it. He can scare him. No kit. Ooh, and they both jump over the box to secure themselves in 11th round. That one got scary. Oh, this is the That's shot. what it was. He has a collat. Oh, he does them both. God damn. b down is a in the pit. freak, man. Dies to the flying Nevera. Yeah, they almost get them all just between the two of those guys. Damn. After that pistol round, it looked like they were just gonna get demolished. But, uh, they still got something left on the tank. But they gotta go up against the let tank. That was a cool 2v2 from Vitality. That was really the smoke that won the round, right? You know, Chris could make it a 1v1 for free. He can't even trade the guy when the smoke comes up. So if there was no smoke at all, no molly, he could have peaked. So, that was just utility winning the round. Beautiful stuff. 
and frozen on the most obtuse angle you've ever seen. Easy evacuation. Chris J's still on it, though. He's just kind of been left. Uh-oh. And he tries to <laughs> run. But, uh... Oh, the double-up quad. Ooh, yes. RPK. 23 and 5. 24 <laughs> and 5. Wow. <laughs> RPK is fragging. Z who? Guess, guess we know what he was doing before match start. Just straight aimbots. Apex going to uh, seal the deal there versus Kerrigan. Just be Mass's Deagle left over. I can't believe I said Gatling. E Gatling. Down goes BMAS in the end. So five players up. This is an excellent start to the T side of Vitality. I mean, if we just look at the round count, I said one of the last eight. Now they've added three on top of that. So 10 of the last 11, all the way of Vitality. It's been quite some time we've seen Mouse Sports succeed. Let's hope for their sake, it's the M4s that they needed. That'd be cool. All right, let's 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 see what the setup is going to be here. If there's any going to be any aggressive openings or what kind of look. Now, normally, Mouse Sports don't like to fight to the bottom of Banana. They like to pretend, and then they actually just fight at the top. So it looks like that, that's what they're doing right now. Do some really good damage to Chris, and Vitality not really committing themselves. So just here to get some nade damage off. They're successful on that, and they'll come back later. I think definitely the key to fighting Mouse Sports on their CT side, Banana is to come up a little bit later when no one's home. They'll uh, have a free shot. RBK is going to slowly take control of things. Lots of audio being offered to Kerrigan. And he gets a bit of chip damage in. Oh, wait. Flash for actually to peak. This is coming in. But he actually goes around the corner before the flash has time to pop. Could have been the opening. Instead, it's the man disadvantage that Vitality find off of their first initiative. Let's see if he can hold. Frozen from new box. He's been playing well from back here, but Apex, he's going to execute Chris J as he just slides by the tree. Frozen still unbeknownst to the T's, and he will shut down RPK. Goes for the second kill and finds it, but it's Apex still on a tear back by that spawn. And Masuda, the clutch is on. He's got two players ahead of him. Good luck. Two best players. They both have smokes. Neither has a kit, and I don't see one inside of the bomb site. Masuda's able to just tuck back. If they had an incendiary or a frag grenade, then maybe they could make their job a little easier. But Masuda, if he swings wide and catches them by surprise, they could both be done for. Rops, he is the front runner, and he finds that instant headshot. You see what I mean? He's like a he's like a heavy. Like he's just so careful about everything. It looks like. He is pre-aiming that and ready, ready to swing. He actually cleaned out every single angle. And who you got right behind him? An, an amazing refragger. So a really good 2v1 there. There was a chance, of course, for Masuda to win that. Instant headshot from Rops on low HP. This is about them shutting down the arch split and also Frozen from the back of the site getting the two. And again, Frozen is the guy who's always going to play quad. But it's not a one and done position. It's a, it's a position that has a lot of utility if you play it right. And it's hard to deal with if you don't molly it. And he's just very strong on those angles. So they can know he's there, but he, he's always going to be able to contribute. And my mistake, I think I said Mouse Sports had a really good T side, but it was, I guess, their CT side, CT side. where they used Cubby all the time. That was a big thing for them. Yep. It's okay. You had me convinced. Speaking with confidence today. Rops peaking with confidence. And it doesn't work. Masuda's going to be tagged down to a... Ooh, 75, and, well, further damage, sure enough, but no additional kills coming in for Mouse Sports. None at all. Like, really nothing. Oh, oh. Apex could have been number one. They concede, Launders. They yep. immediately get on the board with that nice little retake on the B site. They get one round back after a dry spell of seven. And it's right back into the desert. At least they save, because they save with three. They have high, ho high hopes for this next round, at least. But it would have been um, a lot more difficult to stave off this 14th and 15th round that are coming. So we'll see what Mouseports try again. A little bit of vitality. 
a little bit of mouse sports in Vitality with the mid pop. They really take advantage of the CT peeking down mid and, and go for the nice trade. And they have some good continuation flashes from safety here in alt. I believe we're going to see our, our, our second player up after Robs takes that peek. Masuda's going to peek him. He's going to be full blind. And it's a very nice adjustment. You know, BMAS still almost sprays him down hand over face. Whoa. 24 and 600 ADR here for, for RPK. Been very good. Scary. Masuda's been very good. RBK's been very good. We know Navera's a consistent force. He's 15 and 6 as well. Molly up close on the wall. And RPK. Is he going to run through this? Ah, no. He's going to sit right underneath them. Ice is out Chris J. Despite heavy damage versus RPK and Apex, they get that man advantage and convince Frozen to just sulk back into the bomb site. Rops, maybe he can cut one off at the tail end of this app's play. Oh, I can hear him. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Is he going to walk up? This would actually be so smart of him. Wow, he actually just waits for them to cross. Oh, but Zewoo Who's comes more back. Aware? Jesus. And just like that, we've got Mouse Sports giving up the B bomb site, completely clear for the taking, whether Vitality know it or not. Very scary stuff. Looked like it was going to be a pretty pristine play. Maybe there wasn't enough things to keep him their attention forward there in the halls. But uh, this is a B site wide open. They've cracked the code. I think saving three guns again for mouse sports makes a lot of sense here. But it, it, at the same time, it looks like Z was thinking about, oh no, they're coming back to A. Oh my goodness. No, they're going to go back now. They have to, surely. They're, they're having someone clear out the site completely. They line up. What are you guys doing? Oh, Ziwu, he comes out from the apartments. That's one thing. The bomb's still stranded over on mid. Apex, he's been killed by Kerrigan, who now has to clutch versus the heaviest hitters of Team Vitality. They cannot get the bomb and go to B. So oh. Kerrigan has an opportunity to get a lucky kill and be able to maybe watch this flank. Library peak. Yeah, he's coming in hot. Oh, okay. There, yeah. they, if he was in the right position, yeah. you know, by chance with the amount of time left over, there was hope. That was a bit sketchy. RPK gets all the way across the pool, doesn't see a soul. I guess it's Kerrigan's one flash that, that, that makes him believe there could be someone else there. Oh, man. But they really run into a heavy overstack on the A site and almost lose because BMAS is so good at, at locking the spray down. Tough one. I mean, not a bad round, all things considered, but yeah, 7 to 14. Oh, damn. And just like last round, Ziwu gonna find the head of Rops. A quick execution, and Chris J, with the trade, his fifth kill of this map, falls back into the B bomb site with RPK hot on his heels. Masuda is gonna be allocated to the apartments, make sure these pesky CTs aren't flanking. They've got little to lose, so you'd think most sports have to make a proactive play. They're going to do exactly that here towards Banana. As the utility soars forward, so does Chris. But he misses his second shot, and then the pistol by his side dies, leaving pressure on Kerrigan coming in from Coffins with plenty of players ahead. Nevera's three kills on this round will seal the deal and give Vitality that 15th easy. To help contextualize this loss a little bit for potentially what's happening here, we have Mouseports on a six-game win streak on Inferno, including a 16-3 win over Astralis in the Grand Finals at DreamHack Masters. And Astralis are a team that have won one, have won 12 out of the last 13 Inferno games and then got a 16-3 loss to Mouseports. And now Vitality are going to beat them, and Mouseports themselves have a six or seven map win streak. And <laughs> Vitality themselves have a five-map win streak going to be six now on this map, and they've all taken down top teams in the process. No sleepers at all. So this uh, is a big statement game here for Vitality to show us that they're still very much in form coming out of their last event and looking very hot. There's a lot on the line here, over 400 grand in total for the Blast Ball Finals. A very big event. You know, we've got, I think, nine out of the ten top teams here as we come into the year close. Yeah. Very serious event. Closing out the qualification for the Blast Global Finals in January as well. We've got half of our teams and we're looking for four more. And this is a this is a tournament that Mouseports can show us they didn't have a one-off run and that they aren't a sleeper in this bracket. 
potentially facing against a team we would expect to get to the finals of this event. Vitality? Absolutely. Agreed. So They've been so hot. Yeah. So Ever since they implemented that six-man roster, there's been no stopping them. So because this is double elimination, it doesn't necessarily mean a ton if Mouseports lose here to Vitality, who potentially make it far. But it would have said a lot if Mouseports were able to win. And of course, there's still going to be more games in this series. Yeah, there's two more maps that we, you know, could be uh, could end up watching. But here on Inferno, Vitality have made a statement. Absolutely. Vitality most recently conquered their number one thing of 2020, and that was winning a best of five grand final over Navi. Oh wait, did they? Yeah, they won that. Navi opening up versus Astralis later this evening. Oh my so, Counter-Strike en masse. Little damage off of the frag grenades. RPK gonna start pushing this one forward. And, well, Apex, he gets the first kill. RPK the second. We've got Kerrigan in position, but Masuda. Oh man, this is a team effort coming out of Vitality and there's just no sign of stopping them or even slowing them down. 23 rounds of Counter-Strike, and RPK is knocking on the door of 30 frags to his name alone. Hard carry from Ziwu, not even needed, but this flank could just ice out Mouse Sports. Neither of their two players are actually watching the back line, and Ziwu's gonna go ahead and reveal that he is over there. Rops now, one versus three. There's a player back by Banana, there's one inside of the bomb site, and then of course that question mark in Ziwu. So Rops, he is trying to calculate any way to get into this clutch, and the probability is low no matter where he goes. T-Side knows it. Executed. Nevera takes that final kill. Vitality, the final round they needed. A convincing 16 7 start on Inferno. Very big statement game here for Vitality. What it means for the rest of the series 